What's the game of the year this season in the SEC 2020 college football? Georgia versus Bama, Georgia versus Florida, Auburn, Bama, Auburn, LSU. What is the game of the year this season in the SEC and college football? I don't know. I'm going to go through the schedule in today's video, and I'm going to pick out a few games from each week that I think are going to be big games. They're going to have a big impact on how the season plays out overall. As far as the game of the year goes, I don't know. Every week that goes by in college football, they're telling us that now there's another game that's now the game of the year, the game of the century, right? Depending on what happened the week before, they hype up the next game every single time. You can let me know down below what game you're most excited about this season uh, within the SEC college football, but I'm going to go through week by week and pick out one or two games that I think are going to be huge. Hey, good morning. It's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou. Live for you on YouTube today, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate it also. And too, in addition to that as well, welcome back to SEC Week here on the channel. This is something I do every offseason. I dedicate an entire week to each of the five Power Five conferences, and I make a series of videos pertaining to that specific conference. Yesterday, I ranked the head coaches within the SEC, always a controversial topic and video. I'll put a link up here somewhere if I can remember. If you haven't seen that one yet, you can flip back and check it out. Find out where your coach ranks in the Uncle Lou head coaching poll within the SEC. But today I'm going to go through the schedules week by week, and I'm going to pick out a few games each week that I think are going to end up having a, a pretty big impact overall on the season and just some games that I think are interesting for one reason or another. We'll start with week one. We'll work all the way uh, down to the end of the regular season. Don't forget, if you've been looking for the live shows and you haven't heard or don't know yet, I've created a second channel uh, specifically for the live show. So there'll be a link right down there in the description to that second channel. And all of the live shows are broadcast and posted on that second channel now. So if you haven't made your way over there yet, make sure you click the link, subscribe to that second channel, turn the bell on with the notifications so you get notified every time I go live. But all the regular uploaded videos are going to remain on this main channel. All right, let's start with week one. Week one has become an interesting week in college football over the last 10 years or so with the advent of a lot of these neutral site games that uh, are being played the first week or two of the season almost every single year now. And 2020 is no different. If we look through the SEC, we can find a handful of games in week one that are pretty interesting. Of course, you've got Alabama playing Southern Cal. Now, these are two traditionally great programs, right? If you look over the course of college football history, Alabama and Southern Cal have been pretty good teams for the majority of their existence. Now, Southern Cal has been sort of down the last 10 or 15 years or so since the run they had with Pete Carroll and, and Reggie Bush and Matt Leiner and those guys there. Clay Helton sort of hanging on for dear life as head coach there. But still, this is an interesting game, right? Will Alabama be favored? I'm sure they will. Will Alabama win? It's most likely. But this is an interesting game. Week one, neutral site played in Arlington, Texas. A lot of eyeballs will be on that game. What about Ole Miss versus Baylor? Baylor, brand new coaching staff. Ole Miss, brand new coaching staff. Uh, Baylor had a great year last year. Uh, losing head coach Matt Rule now to the NFL and the Carolina Panthers. Ole Miss, not so good, decided to go in a different direction, a totally different direction, and have brought in none other than Lane Kiffin. A lot of expectations surround Lane Kiffin, a lot of interest and curiosity surround Lane Kiffin, no matter where he goes. A lot of people, I'm assuming, will be watching this game to see what uh, a Lane Kiffin-led Ole Miss team is going to look like in 2020. We'll find out week one, Ole Miss and Baylor in Houston, another neutral site game. What about Charlotte at Tennessee? I know what you're thinking. This isn't very interesting. I agree. And listen, I thought about doing a whole troll thing about how they lost to Georgia State week one last year. Tennessee should beat Charlotte. Uh, let's just be honest and realistic here. Now, they do play, isn't it, the following week they play at Oklahoma? I really hope Tennessee doesn't make the same mistake they made last offseason, which is overlooking an inferior opponent week one and really embarrassing not only themselves but the SEC. Again, that's not trash talk. That's just legitimate. As much as I like to rag on other SEC teams, I'm an SEC homer. I don't like to see an SEC team go out and lose to somebody like Georgia State or Charlotte. 
I don't expect that to happen two years in a row with Tennessee, but I'm sure leading up to this game, we will hear a ton about how Tennessee lost to Georgia State the year before. So for that reason, I have it on this list of interesting games. And Georgia versus Virginia, I'm not real sure how interesting that is on a national uh, scale. I'm a Georgia fan, so it interests me a little bit. I liked Virginia last year. At least I liked watching them because I liked Bryce Perkins. I thought he was an exciting player and somebody that was really fun to watch. He's gone. Virginia's got a great defense, though, and they will hit you. I think they're a good team. I don't know if they're great. Week one, always interesting. You don't know what you're going to get. QB situation up in the air for Georgia. I do think a lot of people will be watching that game. So those are the four games I have for week one. Week two, what about Arkansas at Notre Dame? Arkansas, another team with a brand new coaching staff. They bring in Sam Pittman, offensive line coach at Georgia and offensive line coach at Arkansas prior to that. Skipped to the whole coordinator role. Gets promoted straight from offensive line coach to head coach at Arkansas. Arkansas, unfortunately for Pittman, probably in the worst shape roster-wise of any team within the SEC. I don't expect them to beat Notre Dame, but again, you have a new coach there that draws attention and curiosity. And Notre Dame draws attention and curiosity. People will be watching that game. Auburn versus North Carolina in Atlanta, a week two neutral site game. Gus Malzahn versus Mac Brown. I'm high on North Carolina. I think North Carolina is going to be a good team this year. If I had to pick right now, I would pick North Carolina as the second best team within the ACC. Sam Howell returns at quarterback. They exceeded expectations last year in Mac Brown's first year. Auburn, of course, Gus Malzahn, new offensive coordinator there. Bo Nix, uh, second year. I think Auburn probably has a more talented roster than North Carolina. I think Auburn will probably be favored in that game, but I don't think it's an automatic guarantee that Auburn will win that game. I think that's a very interesting game in week two, one that I'll definitely be watching. Kentucky at Florida. Now, two years ago, Kentucky went down to the swamp and beat Florida for the first time since the 80s. Florida got revenge last year, winning in Lexington. Can Kentucky pull off the upset again at the swamp down in Gainesville? I don't know. First SEC game for Florida and Kentucky, I believe. Uh, an interesting game. We'll see. Florida will be favored. Texas at LSU, a rematch of one of, if not the most exciting games of all of last season. That Texas first LSU game last year was absolutely Unbelievable. Almost 2,000 yards of offense. Each team had close to 1,000 yards. Each quarterback had over 500 yards passing, if I remember correctly. It was just an amazing game to watch. Of course, that's the game that sort of uh, propelled LSU on to a 12-0 regular season, an SEC title, and a 15-0 undefeated national championship season. Texas, it really set them back. They were hampered with injuries, ended up having a disappointing season. I think they ended up going 7-5 and five in a regular season. Very disappointing for Texas. We'll see if this year's game can live up to last year's. I don't know if that's possible. I don't know. No matter how good this game ends up being, I don't know if anything could live up to what we saw last year with Ellinger versus Burrow. Burrow's gone now, so LSU going to look a little different offensively, at least in terms of personnel. Joe Brady's also gone. Uh, uh, back off to the NFL, I believe. Uh, right. Yeah. Also, to, did he go to the Panthers too? I don't know. I think he did. Anyway, point is a lot of people be watching it. It's LSU. It's Texas. You'll be watching. That's week two. And then, uh, Tennessee at Oklahoma, a game I mentioned earlier. Oklahoma will be a favorite. They'll be at home. They've got a new quarterback because, well, it seems like they have a new quarterback every year. They do these one and done things. I guess Baker Mayfield started for a couple of years, but then they had Kyler Murray for one year. Then they had Jalen Hurts for one year. Looks like it's going to be Spencer Rattler at Oklahoma. Finally, they're going to play a quarterback that they actually recruited and signed at a high school instead of going the transfer route. Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts all transferred in to Oklahoma. Kyler Murray signed with them out of high school. OU will be a big favorite. They're at home. I think most people expect OU to win that game. My biggest thing watching this game when it comes to Tennessee is not can they win because I don't think they can. Can they keep it close at all? Can, can this be an interesting game in the second half? How far forward has Tennessee come in now Pruitt's third year versus a legitimate top five or 10 program and team in Oklahoma? We'll find out week two. Week three, you really start your conference schedules. At that point, everybody almost is playing conference games. By then, UGA at Bama. Now, right now, at least on paper, that appears to be the game of the year within the SEC. Maybe you want to put Bama and LSU in the same category. Uh, that would make sense, too. But, of course, uh, Bama and LSU play every single year. Georgia and Alabama don't. They're on a rotating uh, six-year uh, interval there with a SEC East versus West. In Tuscaloosa, huge game. I'm sure College Game Day will be there. It'll be the game of the week for sure that week in all of college football. Both of these teams will be ranked in the top five to start the preseason. I don't expect either of these teams to lose in the first two weeks. So you're probably looking at a 2-0 Georgia ranked in the top five versus a 2-0 Alabama ranked in the top five. Everyone will be watching 
that game. You also have Missouri at South Carolina in week three. And while that's not a matchup for uh, an interesting matchup for obvious reasons, um, I think both these teams will probably start the season unranked, probably still be unranked at week three, even if they're both two and oh. Will Muschamp's got to win some games this year. South Carolina is not going to sit around and witness very many seasons that don't lead to at least a bowl uh, bid. Terrible season last year. They did have the big win over Georgia, but other than that, it was an abject disaster and failure of a season for South Carolina and Will Muschamp, who's now heading into his fifth year. This is one of the games on South Carolina's schedule because when you look at their schedule, it's brutal again. They play Georgia. They play Florida. They play Clemson. They play LSU. That's that might be four of the best five teams. It's definitely four top 10 teams. So then you look at the other games and you got to try to figure out, okay, how many of those games can South Carolina win? This is one of those games. It's at home for South Carolina, an absolute must win, in my opinion, week three for Will Muschamp in South Carolina when they host Mizzou. Week four, what about Ole Miss? Uh, floor, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, Ole Miss at LSU. Uh, Lane Kiffin, right at Ole Miss. High-flying offense. People love to follow Lane Kiffin. He's an interesting character, like we mentioned before. So Ole Miss goes on the road, take on the Tigers of LSU. Again, LSU will be a big favorite in that game, especially right now. We'll see what these teams look like by the time this game is played. Not many people would pick Ole Miss to win this game right now, but I do think that's an interesting matchup. You also have Florida on the road at Tennessee. Tennessee has four huge games this year, in my opinion. Oklahoma, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida. Can Tennessee win one of those four games against those big four teams? Um, their record against Georgia, Florida, and Alabama, who they play every year over the last 12 years, is well documented. I think they're three and nine in the last 12 years against, uh, or they have three wins in the last 12 years against those teams combined. So they play all three of those teams every year, three times 12, that's 36. Does that make them three and 33 against those three teams in the last nine years? I don't know if my math is right. Maybe it is. Uh, anyway, the point is they've just really struggled against those three teams. And then you throw Oklahoma in the mix. Those are four really good teams, top 10, top 15 teams, all four of them. Can Tennessee beat any of those four? Uh, they play Oklahoma week two, turn around week four, host Florida. If I had to pick, I would, this would be the one I would pick simply because it's at home. Um, I, not that not that they don't have a chance against Georgia, which we'll talk about later, but they got to play on the road at Georgia, whereas you get Florida at home. Big game. A lot of people be watching. Week five, South Carolina at Florida. Can South Carolina beat one of these teams? Think of South Carolina sort of like Tennessee. They've got several like big games against highly ranked teams, right? When you're talking about South Carolina. South Carolina plays Georgia, Florida, Clemson, and LSU. Can they beat one of those four teams? Find out week five when they had to play at the Swamp in Florida. They had a lead there a couple of years ago and blew it. We'll see what they can do this year. Last year, they beat Georgia. Can they do something similar this year on the road against Florida? That was a road win they got against Georgia too last year. And you also have Bama at Ole Miss that week too. So Nick Saban versus Lane Kiffin, interesting for obvious reasons. Kiffin was an assistant and a coordinator under Saban at Alabama. High flying offense he's bringing to uh, Ole Miss. Can they compete at home, Ole Miss, against Bama? We'll find out. Week six, LSU at Florida. A big game every single year. Cross division rival. They play every year. Games have been close lately. Even last year, Florida, really, if you go back and look at it, Florida gave LSU one of their better games last year. I think LSU still ended up winning by 14. It was a pretty competitive game most of the way. Auburn at UGA early in the season this year. Week six, this game has historically been played uh, late in November. Auburn cried and complained to the SEC office that it wasn't fair. SEC office has moved the game up earlier in the year. Uh, Kirby Smart has owned Auburn really four, uh, four and one. Uh, Kirby Smart's been at UJ four years, but played Auburn five times because we play him every year during the regular season. And then in 17, we played him in the SEC title game. We only have the one loss that was in the regular season in 2017 on the road at Auburn. Four and one overall, Kirby Smart is against the barn. Georgia hosts Auburn in week six. Missouri at BYU. And wrapping it up for week six, Tennessee on the road at South Carolina. I think a must win, a must win game for both teams. Both these teams have hard schedules. Uh, both these teams are trying to take steps forward. Uh, last year, uh, Tennessee beat South Carolina last year. That was Tennessee's first win ever against Will Muschamp, going all the way back to his days at Florida. That's right. Even when Will Muschamp was busy, busy winning four games a season at Florida, he still managed to beat Tennessee. That came to a screeching halt last year. Tennessee blew them out um, last year. 
What will happen this year? I don't know. We'll see. Tennessee at South Carolina. That's week six. Moving on to week seven. Mississippi State on the road at Alabama. Mike Leach, the big foot, goes on the road to take on Nick Saban in Alabama. I don't expect Mississippi State to compete for the uh, Western uh, Division title or anything like that. But again, Mike Leach, like Lane Kiffin, is just an interesting character. I mean, I, I'm going to watch every Mike Leach press conference, right? Lane Kiffin, too. You can't help it. The guy has must-see TV. Is he enough? Is Mike Leach enough for Mississippi State to knock off one of the big teams they play? Alabama, Auburn, LSU. Maybe. I, I don't know. I do think Mike Leach is a pretty good coach. Now, he's been coaching for what seems like forever, Texas Tech, and then Washington State, and he's yet to win a division. He has that in common with Dan Mullet, but uh, that's neither here nor there for the purposes of this video. But can he win Can he win one of those big games? We'll see. And again, it's just a press conference. you got to watch him with Mike Leach. It's unbelievable. Texas A&M on the road at Auburn. Which one of these teams uh, is going to win nine or ten games, and which one is going to be stuck at the six, seven, eight win mark? Lately, it's been Texas A&M stuck around a seven or eight win mark. Won nine games two seasons ago with a bowl win. Won eight games last year after their bowl game. It just seems like Texas A&M has had a really hard time sort of breaking through since joining the SEC. They had the one really good year with Johnny Manziel where they might have got to ten wins. They beat Alabama, I believe. Other than that, it's really been disappointing for Texas A&M since joining uh, the SEC. Can they start to turn that around in 2020? Road trip to Auburn. I think that's an interesting game. Florida at Ole Miss, Dan Mullen versus Lane Kiffin. That's just interesting to me. Two uh, offensive gurus, really, at head coach there with Dan Mullen and Lane Kiffin. Florida's got to go on the road, play at the Grove there at Ole Miss. I think that's an interesting game, week seven. Moving on to week eight, Mississippi State at LSU. Bigfoot, Mike Leach on the road in Death Valley at LSU. LSU will be a favorite, but again, can Mike Leach win one of these big games this year? Will we see the Mike Leach effect show up year one, or does he need a couple of years to get some players in there? We'll probably know the answer to that question by, that, by this point in the season. Texas A&M on the road at South Carolina. Another game I think South Carolina's got to find a way to win. Um, they play every single year. They're the cross-divisional game that gets played every single year in the SEC, uh, Texas A&M and South Carolina. Texas A&M has beat South Carolina every single time. That's got to come to an end eventually. Will it be this year? I don't know. Again, South Carolina has got to win some of these games against these seven, eight-ish win teams if they want to make a bowl game because the odds of them beating an Alabama, a Florida, a Georgia, or a Clemson are not very good. So they've got to win some of these games against these seven, eight, nine win teams if they want to get to a bowl. Can they do that for the first time against Texas A&M? I, I don't know. It's at South Carolina. That helps. So we'll see. Also in week eight, third, you know, third Saturday in October, is that what they call it? Bama at Tennessee. Hasn't been a competitive game uh, really in the last 10 years or so. Alabama under Nick Saban has dominated Tennessee in this yearly matchup. But again, can Tennessee win one of those big four games? And even if they can't, can they keep some of those games competitive at the end or at least into the second half? How far forward has Tennessee come under Jeremy Pruitt? I think we'll find out in games that Tennessee plays against uh, your Alabamas, your Georgias, and your Oklahomas. That's week eight. Week nine, Florida versus UJ and Jacksonville play this game every year around Halloween. Neutral site in Jacksonville. Georgia's won three in a row. Is that right? Florida won three in a row prior to that. Georgia won three in a row prior to that. So it's been coming in series of threes lately. Dan Mullen has not uh, beat UGA yet. He lost to UGA in his last year at Mississippi State and has lost, of course, his first two years at Florida. Two of those games were blowouts. Uh, the one last year really wasn't even that close either, although it was the closest of the three. I do think Florida is improving under Dan Mullen. You get Kyle Trask back, who showed a lot of promise last year. You got Emory Jones sort of waiting in the wings. Will he get more opportunities this year at quarterback? We'll see. They're loaded at wide receiver. I still think Florida needs to find some answers running the ball offensive line and replace some key pieces on defense. They recruited okay the last couple of years uh, around top 10-ish. That still puts them way behind the eight ball overall within the SEC. But can they break through this year, win the division, beat Georgia? We'll find out uh, at the cocktail party. And you also have Auburn on the road at Mississippi State that week. So Gus Malzahn versus Mike Leach. Can Mike Leach beat them? Uh, that, that's the, the, there's several teams in the SEC where I'm looking at like three or four games that each of those teams is playing and saying, okay, can they win one of those four? Can they keep any of those four close into the second half, even if they can't win them? This falls into that category. Week 10 coming up close to the end here, last month of the season. Bama on the road at LSU, a rematch of one of the most highly anticipated games from last year. LSU got the job done in Tuscaloosa last year. Can they make it two in a row at home 
this year with a new quarterback and no Joe Brady? We'll find out. Um, Alabama's defense is going to be much better, in my opinion, in 2020 than it was in 2019. Played a ton of freshmen last year. That sucked for them last year. They're going to reap the benefits of that this year, though. A very experienced defense coming back for Nick Saban. Najee Harris coming back is a huge deal. Who will be playing quarterback for Alabama at this point in the season is anyone's guess. I do think Mac Jones will probably start game one. I'm of the opinion that at some point in the season, Bryce Young will take over. Will it have happened by this point in the season? Probably, to be honest. I think probably around week three or four, you're going to start to see more of Bryce Young than you will Mac Jones, but that remains to be seen. Bam at LSU. You also have UGA on the road at South Carolina that week. Revenge game from an embarrassing loss for Georgia at home. Last year, you got Ole Miss on the road at Texas A&M. Uh, Jimbo Fisher versus uh, Lane Kiffin. Two coaches that need a good win. I know it's Lane Kiffin's first year at Ole Miss, but you don't bring a guy like Lane Kiffin in just so you can lose to teams like Texas A&M. And Jimbo Fisher has been underwhelming so far in his time at Texas A&M. Kellen Mond is back for what seems like his 100th year at Texas A&M. Again, Texas A&M has got to start getting to 8, 9, 10 wins plus. They can't keep hovering around the 7, 8 win mark. Ole Miss is a team that uh, is the type of team that Texas A&M's got to beat. If they're going to do that, same thing can be said for Ole Miss. Most must win game probably for both teams there. Uh, and you also have Tennessee at UGA that week. Uh, a flip-flop sort of for UGA when it comes to when they play Tennessee and when they play Auburn. Again, reasoning for that, Auburn, Gus Malzahn, and his administration complained to the SEC office that it wasn't fair that they had to play Georgia and Alabama to end the season. So they've got the Georgia game moved up, and now that pushes the Tennessee game back, uh, Tennessee at UGA Week 10. Week 11, Tennessee uh, – oh, I'm sorry, that is Week 11, Tennessee at UGA. The other three games were Week 10. Tennessee at UGA – uh, it'll be a big game. I've said it all through the video. Can Tennessee win one of these games? Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Oklahoma. Can Tennessee win one of them? Can they keep them close? Can they be competitive? The majority of those games have not been close in the last decade or so for Tennessee. Can they start to turn that around? We'll find out. I, for one, am glad this game is at home for Georgia. I do think Tennessee is getting better. Week 12, Texas A&M at Bama. Um, Bama be favored there. Uh, LSU at Auburn. Uh, Mississippi State at Ole Miss. Uh, da, 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 da. That's week 12. Week 12, Texas A&M at Bama, LSU at Auburn. Sorry, I'm getting – I can't read my own writing in that. Week 12, Texas A&M at Bama and LSU at Auburn. Interesting for obvious reasons. LSU at Auburn. Are, are people picking Alabama? Is that the – is everyone picking Alabama? If you're not picking Alabama, you're probably picking either LSU or Auburn. If for some reason Alabama ends up not being as good as we think for, a, again, maybe it comes down to this LSU and Auburn game. I don't know. Interesting to me. And in the final week of the season, rivalry week, so you've got all the games you're used to seeing. You've got Georgia versus Georgia Tech. You've got Auburn versus Alabama. You've got the Egg Bowl, Mississippi State versus Ole Miss, Mike Leach versus Lane Kiffin. I will watch every press conference that entire week. I guarantee you, uh, you've got South Carolina and Clemson, LSU and Texas A&M, Tennessee and Vandy, Kentucky and Louisville. You guys know the last week of that regular season rivalry week all over the country, Florida and Florida State, not just within the SEC. One of the best weeks of the year in all of college football, period. So there it is, the regular season, weeks one through 13, a handful of games from each week that I think will go a long way in deciding how this season plays out for a lot of these teams and some must-watch games, in my opinion, even for teams that won't be competing for a playoff spot or a national title or even a conference title. These games are interesting for plenty of reasons. These will be some of the most watched games of the season, I'm sure. Let me know down below what you think about this year's SEC schedule. Give me a, you know, you know, we don't have to list them all, but give me give me three or four games that you're most excited about out of this list or whatever for the SEC in 2020. That's it. I appreciate you guys watching. Have a good morning in that.